Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and in this video series, I'm teaching you how to build a random quote generator. Um, in the last videos, uh, I gave an overview of the project, and I talked about the differences between uh, using CodePen, which is the online editor that you have to use for submitting your free CodeCamp projects, um, and uh, the differences between using CodePen and just using an external uh, text editor, which is what we will be using in this video series. Um, for like 97, 98% of, uh, of everything we're going to do, uh, it, it's going to be the same. Um, CodePen does make you know, certain things easier and more convenient, um, and cutting those corners um, is, a, is a missed opportunity for, for learning, you know, I think, some important stuff. So I'm going to show you how to, um, how to make this from scratch using um, just an external uh, code editor so you miss nothing. Uh, okay, that being said, uh, in this video, we're uh, going to mark up our HTML page. So uh, let's get to work. Um, uh, I, I showed you earlier uh, in the last video that if you have Atom, it comes with an autocomplete, you know, um, for, for HTML and a lot of good stuff. So I can literally just type HTML, press the tab button, and then I get like the boilerplate for a, a basic HTML document. And I explain what you know all, each of these major tags are. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, blow this up. Let's see here. I'm gonna I need to do, do. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit big so you can see that. Okay. And yeah, let's just get to work. Uh, so let's call it the random quote machine for the uh, for the title there. And uh, you know, for a real you know website, you're gonna add a lot of these so-called meta tags, um, different ones mainly for SEO or search engine optimization purposes. This is just a, a simple front end project though, so you know we're not going to get into SEO or any of the advanced like head tags there. Uh, this one, I mean, we don't really even need. Uh, it's just um, you know telling the browser, hey, we're using um, we're using the UTF-8 you know character set. Uh, which are the characters that you're using um, if you have a like an English you know keyboard. Um, if you have a Japanese or a Chinese or Korean keyboard, you're using a different character set. Um, anyway, we're just telling the browser, hey, um, the characters on this website uses um, you know, English letters or English alphabets or whatever. Okay. Uh, also, another important thing that we have to include in our uh, doc type, uh, sorry, in our head tags are the CSS files. And a lot of people, uh, they put their CSS and uh, JavaScript files in the head tag, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, out of habit, I like to put my, um, uh, I like to put my, uh, you know, um, my JavaScript files uh, at the bottom of the body. Uh, the reason is, if you have a very large JavaScript file uh, and you put it in the head, uh, well, the browser is going to load that JavaScript file first. And uh, it's going to do that before it loads anything else and renders anything in the body uh, tags. So if you got a lot of JavaScript and it's taking a long time to load, the user is just going to see like a blank white screen for a very, very long time, which isn't good. So you need to decide um, and you need to, you know, kind of balance, you know, um, you know, what's important. Uh, does your website absolutely need to use any JavaScript um, before it loads the body. Um, and if it doesn't, well, it might be a good idea just to put it, you know, at the bottom here. Uh, and then later on, you know, towards the end of this, um, you know, video course, we'll play around with that. Uh, but just, just to let you know that, um, you know, you can put the JavaScript in the head um, or at the bottom of the body or anywhere in the body, really. I prefer to, you know, separate the two, um, but we'll play around with that later. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm definitely going to include my um, my own, you know, uh, custom CSS file. Okay, so I'm going to um, write a comment here: CSS files. Okay, and first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to type link, press tab, and look at that. Um, all right, so we get all of this extra stuff. And we don't need it. The most important things are um, this REL style sheet. 
and the href where it's actually located. So um, the style sheet, main.css, it's uh, located in the same directory as my HTML file, so I just need to say main.css. Okay, cool. Uh, we just need two more CSS files to make this work. Uh, we need to get the bootstrap CSS and also font awesome CSS file. Uh, let's get bootstrap first. All right, if we go to the bootstrap website, getbootstrap.com and click getting started, um, we can uh, get bootstrap here. And there's a number of different ways we can get it. Uh, we can download bootstrap and uh, just uh, you know just have the bootstrap file like right in here you know uh, with you know main.css uh, to keep things easier uh, you know we're just going to use the CDN uh, CDN is content delivery network and see how can I blow this up yeah uh, you can just get it from the bootstrap CDN and a CDN is basically uh, it's a way to you know share you know files across the internet and uh, the, the servers are optimized you know for speed and performance and they load files like really really fast so you know for certain files you know common files like css and javascript files uh, that are used for your production uh, a lot of developers they use a cdn because it's just going to load you know uh, you know really really fast um, and we don't have to download or, or do anything like that so i'm going to copy and paste just this first one right here, latest compiled and minified CSS. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay. And I'm just going to put it above and put it right here. Oops. And it's quite long. Okay. And, and as you go along, try to keep your, um, try to keep your, um, uh, your indentation like you know nice and neat so it looks good and then I'm gonna get something else called font awesome font awesome basically has awesome fonts and cool different icons and you can go to the website and check it out it's got some very cool stuff no JavaScript required and I mean there, there's so many different things here it's it's basically like glyphicons um, you know bootstrap they have the glyphicon icons uh, but this is just it has so much uh, it's really really cool okay um, I'm gonna get the CDN for that let's see let's just search for it font awesome CDN okay uh, this looks promising yeah, that looks it. Uh, okay, cool. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Oh, it even gives us the HTML that we need for it. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and copy it there. All right, great. So we've got our um, our Bootstrap CSS. We've got our uh, Font Awesome CSS, and we also have our uh, our own custom CSS file. Nothing is in there yet. But we can just go ahead and include that anyway. Uh, all right, we're also going to need to include uh, our JavaScript file, and we're going to you know save that for last. But let's go, just go ahead and include it anyway. So I'm going to type script in my Adam editor, editor, and it'll auto complete. There we go. And uh, you can you know write you know your JavaScript between these tags. Uh, we're not going to do that though. We're just going to keep it in an external file. Okay. So we actually, we don't even need this type right here. The most important thing is just the source. So SRC, okay. And then uh, that's our source attribute. Excuse me here, let me just check some notes. Yep. And it's called main.js. All right, so save that. And if we you know go to our browser, this is where our page is. Uh, let's see here, oops. Let's see, let me go ahead and close that. That was the finished product. Let me go to okay, open file. Okay, okay, test. Here we go. All right, so nothing's on the page. You can notice here on the tab that we have random quote machine, but yeah, there's nothing on there right now. So let's go ahead and let's start adding some markup to our, um, to our uh, page right here. 
All right, so I'm going to be using a lot of Bootstrap classes. Um, and if you're familiar with Bootstrap, great. If not, uh, just follow along and, and I'll explain, you know, uh, as I go. Um, but basically, we need to, uh, I mean, the building block for HTML are divs. And uh, I'll just do that again. And this is why I love uh, using a bootstrap or using Atom so much. I can type in div and then boom, I get the uh, div that I need. So in uh, bootstrap, everything goes into a container class. It just makes everything responsive and then it adds uh, about 15 pixels to the left and right of the page. So it's really good. And we're, we're going to create, um, you know, make this mobile responsive. So we're going to have another class called row. Okay. And then, um, and then, you know, in your container, you have multiple rows and then in your rows, you'll have multiple columns. So every row in a bootstrap website has 12 columns. So I'm going to say div class call MD 12. So basically uh, what I'm saying right here, all right, in this row, uh, okay, it, there's going to be something that takes up all 12 columns. That's what this number 12 represents. And it's for uh, medium screens and, uh, and higher. So medium, large, and extra large. Um, and if I, you know, change this to XS, that would mean extra small. So that would apply to extra small and, you know, everything bigger than that. If I change this number here to four, that meant it uh, that means it only takes up four columns. And uh, remember, there are um, you know, there are twelve columns here. So you know, I could essentially you know copy and paste this uh, two times, and I could have you know one like this, another like that, and another like that. So four and four and four is twelve. Uh, but we're not going to do that here. We just I just want one kind of long column that takes up everything. And I'm not making it for mobile devices or anything like that. You can tinker around and play with it if you want to. I'm just going to create one kind of medium, uh, one column for medium screens and higher. It takes up, you know, all, it takes up all the columns in the row. Okay. And then inside of that, I'm going to put in an H1 and it's going to say random quote machine and an H3 I'll say uh, warning these quotes might inspire you maybe and then I'm going to put an HR and HR is just like a line it's just like a separation you know keeps things you know separated it's nice it gives you a little bit of extra padding so that's pretty cool uh, another you know uh, feature that I love I downloaded this package you can see here um, I'm touching this div this closing div and it tells me where the opening is so that's pretty cool so now I'm going to create a new row okay you can see here the highlighting so I'm going to go after this one I'm going to do the same thing div class row and um, I, I want to do something a little different for the next one. I'm going to say call MD8. So I'm not going to take up all eight I, uh, items, uh, all eight columns. Call MD offset 2. So for the second div, I don't want it to take up the entire screen. But I want it to take up, you know, a good chunk of it, about two-thirds of the screen, and, and I want to make it essentially center. So uh, imagine that you have, you know, 12 columns here, 12, okay, and we've got this div. It's taking up eight, all right, so that means there's four left over, you know, on, on this side, okay. But we're offsetting it by two. That means we're just starting it and pushing it over one two columns so now we have the main div it's still taking up eight columns a good chunk of our screen but it has two columns uh, of blank space on the left and two columns of blank space on the right so it's essentially um, just centering a div for us and uh, and that's how we do that with the offset right there okay 
Uh, right, and then I'm gonna, okay, create another one. I'm gonna call this quote box. This is where we will store all of our quotes. And then I'm gonna do um, a paragraph. So paragraph, and I'm gonna give it an ID, an ID of quote. And then that'll just be empty for right now. I'll do the same thing for author. Oops. And that'll be empty for right now. We're gonna fill that in with the um, with the JavaScript, but I guess I'll go ahead and I'll fill it in anyway so you can see something. So um, I, I don't know. Um, buh, 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 buh. Uh, ham is good. <sighs> And I said that, <laughs> so the author is Stephen Mayu. Okay, let's give it a dash. Okay, that looks nice. All right, cool. Uh, okay, so now we've got, uh, you know, where our text is gonna go. Uh, let's just save that right now and see what we've got. Go here to the browser. Okay, so it's looking nice. It's starting to shape up a little bit. And, um, you know, we're going to put some styling right there, you know, make it look really good uh, for the next video. So we got our H1 and our H3. This kind of line right here, maybe a little bit hard to see, but that's our HR. And then we've got our two P tags or paragraph tags. The only thing else we need to add are the uh, buttons. Uh, so let's go ahead and add those very quickly, and then we'll call it good for uh, this video. Uh, okay, here. So for our quote box, uh, I'm going to keep this in the same kind of column, but outside of the quote box. And let's see. I'm going to create an unordered list, and I'm going to give it a bootstrap class of list in line. So normally, if you use an unordered list, um, you get those, you know, like dots uh, that go down. And um, I don't want that. I want this to not go from, you know, up to down with those black dots. I want it to go from uh, left to right without any black dots. So this is a bootstrap class. It's called list in line. And if we apply it to a UL tag, and that's what we're going to get. So uh, we can do that with uh, buttons. And in an unordered list, we're gonna need some li elements. Okay, and I can just do it like that. And um, you know, these things, they're going to, um, they're definitely going to be uh, you know, clickable. So let's just make them a tags. Okay, so for the first one to get the quote, it's not actually gonna go anywhere. So I'm just gonna put this pound sign and uh, that means it won't do anything. All right, then I'm gonna give it a bootstrap class, a button, button default, button uh, LG for large, and I'm gonna also call it get quote, okay? And then also in there, I'm gonna put an I tag, okay? And this is where I'm going to, um, put in the font awesome. So give it I class uh, FA for font awesome, FA quote left, and then FA FW. This is a special class for font awesome. Uh, FW means fixed width, and it just makes the uh, icons and the text it just makes it um, a line up and, and, and it, you know, there's no weird or funky spacing in the button. So definitely include that in there. Don't forget the FA-FW. And by the way, um, did I leave it up here? No. Yeah, if you go to Font Awesome, you'll find all of those codes you know, for everything. You can you know, get the icons right here. And you know, these are these are all of the, uh, the code, so it tells you, you know, exactly, you know, what it is, and it's really awesome stuff. So just go to the website, have fun with it, uh, and then basically uh, after we do that, we'll just, you know, give it some text. So after the i tag, we'll say get quote. All right, and let's do and one more for the tweet. So we'll say li, same thing. 
And this time, yeah, we're not going to do anything with that. Okay, and I'm going to give it a class, btn, btn default, btn lg, and I'll say share quote. Okay, all right, and then I'm going to say class equals fa, fa, what is the name that I want to use? Oh, yeah, fa Twitter, and then fa fw, and then I'll write share quote. Okay, and that's all that I want to do for this. Uh, so you can see here that, uh, you know, 38 lines of code, not too bad. Let's save it. Let's go to the browser. Okay, cool. So um, it doesn't look like much right now, but we've got, you know, all of the main elements. And even though we haven't applied our own CSS yet, uh, we have been using Bootstrap. So uh, there is a little bit of styling right there. Uh, you can see the padding right here. The padding on the edge of the screen. You can see, um, you know, we obviously have this kind of styling right here with the buttons. You hover over it and get that that highlighting right there. Um, we didn't add that styling. This is all coming from Bootstrap. So um, anyway, pretty cool. And we're going to stop right here. In the next video, we'll go over the CSS. And uh, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. That's all for now. Bye bye.